Donald Trump trial, the, uh, I, I, you know, for people watching on TV, I'm holding this up uh, just to show you I'm not making this up. This is the Chiron on one of the uh, networks this morning. Trump is looking at Pecker as he testifies. Seriously. Uh, but that's what's going on. David Pecker's on the stand, and uh, Trump is glaring at him. And uh, he's in the process of, you know, laying out how he would do catch and kills on behalf of Donald Trump and how uh, Michael Cohen was his go-to guy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's fascinating. In fact, I'll, I'll give you a little update on everything that I know about what's going on in New York right now. And we, we are monitoring this on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. I've got monitors here in the studio. I've got, you know, a, a computer right in front of me. Anything that happens of any consequence, I'll keep you up to date on. So you can stay right here. And, stay up to date on what's going on with the Donald Trump trial. Um, so we'll get into that in just a moment. Also, unveiling the actual shocking driver of crime in America. We'll get into that in this first hour. In the second hour of our program, our single guest for the day, David Pepper, is going to drop by. Um, are younger voters choosing Trump? And if so, why? What's going on with that? And also some interesting stuff just coming out of Ohio, which is where David is based. That's David Pepper, not... David Pecker, the guy who's testifying for Trump. I mean, we've got potential for some confusion here today. Um, but anyhow, no, the, the Trump guy is not going to be on the show. Uh, the Wisdom School Alert is the logic of our younger culture harmful to the planet. We'll dig into that in the second hour. Also, why this summer may be especially hot in the United States. What's the deal? Uh, it has to do with an El Nino becoming a La Nina in the middle of the summer. It's going to get weird. In the third hour of our program, Republicans are still trying to fool women in red states. Now, now with these BS ballot initiatives, they're, they're, they're creating ballot initiatives that sound like they're there to protect your right to abortion, but in fact are abortion bans. And, uh, you know, they've got really nice titles. And also, will non-compete clauses be soon be illegal? What does that mean? We'll talk about that. This is a, uh, uh, you know, a federal agency uh, uh, determination. Um, that is very interesting. So on the, uh, on the Trump crime wave, Trump, uh, Trump basically, you know, going into this case with Judge Mer in front of Judge Mershon, he had basically two options. Um, uh, and this is not with regard to the gag order. This is regard to with, with regard to the case as a whole. Um, he, could, he could have said, you know, yeah, we, I had an affair with her and we paid her off. Uh, I did it because I, I, I wanted to save the embarrassment to my family. You know, as long as he keeps it to that rather than to influence an election, it's not a felony. It's okay to lie to your spouse and it's okay to try to cover up an affair. That's, those are not illegal things. They're covered by the First Amendment. It's not okay to try to throw an election. So he could have said, you know, yeah, I did it and uh, I was embarrassed and I just was trying to protect Melania. And had he made that argument, he would probably, at the very worst, be facing the, the you know, a New York misdemeanor of uh, falsifying business records, for which he would not go to jail. He wouldn't even, you know, there's a remote possibility, but it's pretty remote. Or he could just, you know, put it all on the line. He could put, his, put all his chips on the table, as it were, push it all in, and say, there was no affair. I had no idea that Michael Cohen, you know, mortgaged his home to pay off this woman. I don't know why he did it. I didn't ask him to do it. He's lying. She's lying. Everybody's lying except me, Donald Trump. I'm the only one who tells the truth. He could take that position. These are basically his binary choices, right? And if he takes that position, either he gets off scot-free because the jury believes him, or at least one person on the jury believes him, and there is one person on the jury who has read three Trump books and get his new, gets his news from Truth Social, so yikes. But, uh, you know, on the other hand, it's a high-risk uh, bet because, you know, if the jury doesn't believe him, then he's guilty of a felony. In fact, he's guilty of multiple felonies, and those multiple felonies might end him up in, in jail. Now, uh, Todd Blanche, his lead attorney, you know, and Donald Trump have gone with option number two, clearly, denying everything. And, you know, there's some huge holes in this. First of all, why would Michael Cohen take out a home equity loan if his boss didn't ask him to? I mean, that's not the kind of thing that you do. Hey, I think I'll, I think I'll help out my boss here without telling him. 
I'll, I'll mortgage my home for him. Really? I don't think so. And the second is that, you know, he paid uh, Cohen $420,000, which includes the payments for McDougal and for Daniels, plus enough to cover the taxes, basically. I mean, that's the bottom line of it. Um, as the FBI affidavit says, this is in the Cohen case, quote, I have learned, this is an FBI agent writing, I have learned that in the days following the Access Hollywood video, Cohen exchanged a series of calls, text messages, and emails with Keith Davidson, who was then Clifford's attorney. That's uh, Clifford's uh, Stormy Daniels. Her real name is Stephanie Clifford. Um, David Pecker and Dylan Howard of American Media, the publisher of the National Enquirer, Trump and Hope Hicks, who was then press secretary for Trump's presidential campaign. So now expect to see Hope Hicks testify to this. You know, David Pecker is testifying to it as we speak. Um, he said Michael Cohen was pleased by the way I was going to handle these issues. He said that on the stand just a few moments ago. So there's that. And then there's the, then there's the uh, contempt of court hearing. Uh, they held that this morning. There were 10 specific items that the prosecutors were saying were examples of Trump committing contempt of court, violating the gag order. And they, you know, they were asking the judge not to throw him in jail, which is the judge's prerogative, but to fine him. Now, the problem is the maximum fine for contempt of court in New York State is a thousand bucks. And uh, apparently, I, you know, I'm not a New York lawyer, but uh, <laughs> I've read this in a couple of places. If it's not a thousand, it's, you know, maybe two or three, but it's not a lot. It's an amount that uh, Trump can kind of sneer at. I mean, you'll recall, I think he had to pay 15,000 in contempt of court charges on his uh, fraud trial in uh, Tanya Chutkin's uh, courthouse. Of course, that was uh, not a state. Oh, no, wait a minute. That was the, uh, no, this was Letitia James. Yeah, that was a state court also. So there you go. So anyhow, these are, these are the things that are, that are going on right now. And, and uh, you know, it's going to get weird. It's going to get weird. And the big question, frankly, is how is this going to affect Trump's candidacy? The other, the other thing that's interesting is that there was a new filing yesterday in the documents, the so-called documents case. It's really a uh, Espionage Act case down in Florida, the one that's before Judge Eileen Cannon, where, where Donald Trump stole s cases of top secret documents and military secrets, uh, smuggled them down to Mar-a-Lago, um, you know, kept them in a room with a giant copy machine that's capable of copying and transmitting things over the internet and uh, like to Russia and God only knows what he did with them uh, but you know he lied to the FBI about it repeatedly so anyhow in that case Walt Nauta who is his uh, was his body guy it was his uh, factotum his uh, you know right-hand man kind of guy around Mar-a-Lago uh, now it has been revealed that the FBI has proof that Donald Trump offered Walt Nata a pardon if he lied to the FBI.